Welcome to a brand new episode of No Butts About It. If you're new to the show, I am your host, Josh Butts. I am here with Chuss, who is in his basement in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we've got an interesting show here today. We're going to be talking a little bit about the Bengals, a little bit about the Steelers. Of course, we're going to be talking about Thursday Night Football tonight, that riveting matchup that they've got for us between Tyson Badgett. Chicago Bears and Bryce Young's Carolina Panthers. I cannot wait to watch that. Definitely going to be putting a bet on that. Just to how would me- you bet? What, what would you even bet on? Like <laughs> Bryce Young anytime touchdown? No. Under unders on everything. We are hitting the unders on everything. Uh, yeah, better better off doing that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do a parlay of anytime touchdowns or anything like that because it's very, very. Uh, difficult to guess that i mean khalil herbert could get a touchdown he, he's supposed to be coming off ir so maybe he'll and... maybe he'll get a maybe he'll get a touchdown but i wouldn't put money on like adam Thielen. i mean go figure i mean adam Thielen has had a lot of yards but i don't even know how you would bet on that but hey man yeah. you, you go you you do you man you do you I, i'm gonna i need something i need something to get me through that game but uh first let's get to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The uh, drama out of Pittsburgh has been high this week. We had George Pickens, who uh, was a little frustrated with his team. Uh, he did some social media drama. We saw him uh, maybe perform a not nice gesture on the field towards his teammate. Uh, do you want to uh, elaborate on that? Tell us your thoughts, Chuss. Um, yeah. So basically after the win on Thursday night football against the Titans, George Pickens had finished with two receptions for negative one yards. And he did have a catch in the end zone that would have been for a touchdown if he would have stayed in bounds. So his half of his foot was out, out of the, uh, out of bounds, out of the end zone. So it did not count. It, Obviously, on my angle, because I was at the game, it did look like a touchdown, but obviously on the replay, it clearly was not a touchdown. But, I mean, that was just in that moment in time. Like, you couldn't blame Kenny. You couldn't blame Matt. It was completely George Pickens' fault for not at least getting that second foot just toe-tapped. Because he's he's a toe-tap genius. Like, he he toe-taps, like, all the time. So the fact that he didn't get this one was very shocking. Nonetheless, it was still a win, and we'll take it. But... After the game, George Pickens posted on his Instagram. I don't know if it was like a day later. He posted something goofy. I don't really remember what the post was, but I remember in the bottom left corner in really small letters, it said free me. And apparently like after a couple of other touchdowns during the game, like I didn't see this because I was at the game. So I wasn't watching from home. I wasn't seeing any of these videos or anything like that or any clips of the sidelines or anything. I was just seeing what I was seeing. Apparently he didn't greet. Um, any of the players after they scored a touchdown, like he was just, he was just having a real hissy fit more or less. I mean, he was just not, not being a good, uh, sport. So nonetheless, after he posted free me, he eventually did delete it, but he also ended up deleting all of his Steeler related posts, (laughs) changing his profile picture and being all cryptic and mysterious. And I don't really know why. Because it's not like he can get traded now. I mean, if he was having this many, like if he was having so much concern or this much issues, like he probably should have just not like he should have just requested a trade like earlier in the season at this point, like instead of having a a meltdown week, you know, right after the deadline. So, I mean, like that's that's on him because I mean, he's had games where he hasn't had that great of numbers. This just happened to be one of his probably one of his worst games um, except for maybe a couple last season where he had nothing at all. And like, I've, I've talked to a couple other Steelers fans about this and it's kind of interesting because you would think that a lot of people would be on the side of, Oh, cause like I'm on the side of, I think George Pickens is overreacting a little bit. And I think that the problem is, is yes, I understand like, you know, Matt Canada isn't the best, but I mean, Kenny is trying to get everybody the ball. He was also dealing with some injured ribs definitely looked promising a lot more promising of an offense last week on Thursday night football so I mean there's always that that maybe with Matt Canada being on the sideline that the Steelers will look you know 
a little bit better going into these couple of weeks, or maybe they'll still look the same, but you know, there's some hope there. Um, Kenny Pickett was doing a lot of check downs. He was just passing a lot to his running backs and there was a lot of things like that, but he also was coming off of rib injuries four days before. And I genuinely think he probably shouldn't have played, but then again, I don't think the Steelers wanted to put in Mitchell Trubisky in the risks of losing and then falling even further down into the division when we have a lot going good for us right now. So, but when it comes to George Pickens, I, I was kind of, I was kind of upset with it, and I definitely thought he was overreacting. But he's done this a lot. Um, I feel like he just is like kind of being a crybaby a little bit. And I was asking some other Steeler fans about it, and there was one that was kind of interesting. Um, one of them, one of the Steelers fans, I actually asked. He actually said that he agrees with how George Pickens is reacting. And the reason he actually agrees is because he believes that George Pickens is the best wide receiver on the team, which arguably, yeah, he, he probably is. I mean, he definitely could be. But I mean, you know, I but in my opinion, I feel like that argument isn't valid because even though he's he is the best wide receiver on the team, if, if that so desires to be the case, why are you so upset that like you know, oh, you didn't get the ball this game. Like, I mean, there, there's been games where, like, some of the top wide receivers in the NFL don't get the ball. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you, you have, like, you know, Stephon Diggs who might get, you know, under 50 yards a game or some some wide receivers that just get, like, shut out completely. Like, there's games where that happens. And, like, understandably so, like, this offense is not that productive. So, like, George Pickens wasn't getting, like, great numbers anyway. Like, I mean, it wasn't like he was getting thousands of yards like like this season already he's had you know like like some games he'll have three receptions 80 yards and a touchdown it's like okay like I mean he I get he's a good wide receiver but the problem is is it's still a work a work in progress offense you know so but he's not a Devonte Adams or an AJ Brown where he can come out and say look I can I am the team I should be able to have a hundred yard game very regularly yeah and you mentioned this was one of his worst games. This was, yeah. this has to be his worst game because if you're sitting at home and you never, you didn't play in an NFL game last week, you had more receiving yards than George Pickens because George Pickens had two receptions for negative one yard yeah. against the Titans. And, and like, and I get that, but one of the things is, is like all receivers, like, I mean, granted, like some receivers never have that bad, but like, it's one of those things where it's like, you kind of have to go with the the grind more or less like you have to just kind of like there, there's going to be obstacles in the way like as a wide receiver or anybody in the nfl anybody that is in the nfl whether you're a wide receiver or running back there's going to be adversities and you have to just get over them this isn't probably an ideal situation for pickens right now because he believes he is a dog and i do believe that he is and will be a dog you just can't be a dog right now under this offense and the problem is, is it's adversity right now. And because he's facing adversity, he doesn't know how to handle it. And like he was on Georgia for a while, remember? So and Georgia was very, very, very good. And they still are very, very good. So like he's used to winning constantly. And I think this is very hard for him because I don't think he's necessarily used to being on a team where he's not getting as maybe as many targets. He's not winning as many games. I mean, granted they went nine, you know, nine and eight last year and this year they're five and three. It's not like they're undefeated seven and oh, and he's getting like 110 yards a game. So I don't know. I feel like, I feel like he's just struggling a lot with adversity and he did bring back a lot of his Steeler posts on Instagram, like, or at least a couple of them. So he kind of stopped throwing his little fit. He kind of is acknowledging that he is a, a Pittsburgh Steeler, but um, I just found it very odd that that's, this whole thing was happening, but it does show a lot about his character and it does make me wonder about what kind of um, locker room culture there is, because I feel like there's been a lot of problems with wide receivers in the past and um, obviously with Antonio Brown, you know, that could be here nor there saying with like the head injury from Vontez Perfect, it could be a lot of different things or it could have been, you know, the culture changing him on top of that. I mean, and then you go as far back as like, you know, Martavis Bryant, like literally could not get off the drugs. Like regardless, like it just was very, it's, it's like, obviously there wasn't enough influence to get him to change how he was, what his, uh, 
what his everyday life was. And he just kind of just kept going. And now obviously like he is coming off of this multiple year suspension from the league and stuff. And he's hopefully going to do a lot better in Dallas. And I hope that he's been clean for a while and I hope he's doing well and I hope nothing but the best for him, but it, it, it shows. And like, and even then, like you, we, me and Josh talked about the Heinz Ward thing, like Heinz Ward had a weird hit in 2009 that made a whole role about it, you know, and that was during like the Mike Tomlin era. And like, there, there's a lot of things that um, I kind of, we, we're going to do a deep dive into this probably like postseason, depending on how well George Pickens reacts for the rest of the season. But I do kind of want to, do a deeper dive into these receivers and just players in general, because I feel like there's been just a lot of weird culture issues. And like, you would think that a lot of people were like, Oh, it's Ben Roethlisberger. Ben's not even here anymore. <laughs> like a lot of people were like, yeah, the reason bell and Brown and all these people are doing so, so many of these like weird heinous things and saying these things and doing these things. It's because of Ben, Ben is the power, you know, power mongler. And it's like, Bro, Kenny Pickett's here now. Like, it's not even Ben. Like, he, he buddy's it's in Kenny's his fault. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Just but, shift the blame. But yeah, I mean, I definitely think that there's been a lot of issues. And like, even Claypool. Like, what what the heck happened with Claypool, man? Like, he just really fell off. Like, I don't know. So, I, there, there's a lot to be said. But Pickens is worrying me because if he ends up like an Antonio Brown, I want him off the team next year. Because, because I would rather. I mean, we can develop wide receivers. We just can't keep them happy i guess so what you said if he ends up like in antonio brown what does that look like to you are you talking like full-on like bringing gummy worms to practice and stuff i'm just gonna call it a gummy gummy worm i'm not gonna say what it actually was well i feel like i think what i mean by that is like i mean he's already kind of having like like moments of it already but like if he starts doing the stuff like i remember when antonio brown first got traded and stuff like that i remember or like right right after or whatever i think juju smith schuster got like steelers player of the year or something like that or wide receiver of the year he beat out antonio brown the one season that juju was a rookie or something like that and he called him like boohoo schuster on twitter and like was making this big deal about it and causing all these issues and he was just constantly in the news i feel like we'll know when he is really stepped up to that point, because I feel like he'll end up in the news a lot. Like just not even just local news. Like obviously this Pickens thing is it's an, it's a national thing, but I feel like more people in Pittsburgh are talking about it. But when Antonio Brown was like wanting to get traded, when he was bashing Juju, when he was having these issues, it was national news. Pretty much. It was on all the NFL platforms. He went to Vegas and then he was complaining about foot sores or whatever he was having issues with i I don't even remember what his issues were they cut him and it was just it was a whole mess or whatever it was so like it's 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 interesting so i mean but we'll we'll see um i i think we'll we'll know i think we'll know if if he ends up like him what what is the line i guess i was asking what is the line for you i feel like if his game starts or like if the way that he talks and the way that he carries himself changes. And I feel like already like, you know, his, like his production wasn't that good last week. And if he doesn't have the energy or the drive to do well this week, because, you know, he doesn't want to play or for whatever reason or do this or do that. I, I think that's when you're going to have to start evaluating him and being like, why aren't you playing today? Cause that's what a lot of people are having problems with, with Claypool is when he went to Chicago, he was giving like 30% effort. Like he could have been doing so much more, but he was just kind of like lightly jogging the routes. He didn't really care. And it was like, and he kind of cared when he was with Pittsburgh, but at points it was almost like he didn't care either. And he would make stupid mistakes. Like, and it was just one of those things where it's like with Pickens, like, I don't think he's like that when it comes to making those stupid mistakes and stuff like that. But I feel like um, if his production will go down, like if his production starts going down, we notice like a change in how he's playing or if he becomes very cocky and like continues doing the non-sportsmanship stuff, like, you know, um, doing some weird BS stuff on the field that might be controversial that ends up in the news, like, you know, flipping off a player or doing something weird like that, causing a fight, you know, just stuff that's going to make him look really bad and really toxic. I think that's when you're really going to have to be like, all right, I'm sorry, dude, you got, you got to leave. But if he ends up keeping his cool and stuff like that, and he's just frustrated, maybe, maybe it's not his teammates. Maybe it's 
how he's the offensive coordinator. Maybe it's the head coach. Maybe I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going through his head because I'm not I'm not George Pickens' buddy. We don't have each other's phone numbers, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, it, it we'll we'll see. Um, I want I want to see how it goes out because I, I when Antonio Brown had all that stuff happen, it just kind of all happened so suddenly that it was hard to register. I feel like with this, it's almost like it's boiling, and it we'll see if they decide to turn off the oven and he stops boiling or if they let it overflow. And then if it overflows, then we'll be able to address it from there. But for now, he brought back the Steelers pictures. We're going into Sunday with the block numbers, We're playing Green Bay. Maybe he'll get a hundred, maybe he'll get 300 yards and six touchdowns. I don't freaking know. Maybe he'll blow up. Maybe he'll be the best wide receiver game ever or something. I, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what happens. Good thoughts, good thoughts. While staying uh, within the AFC North, the Cincinnati Bengals are taking on the Houston Texans. Obviously, C.J. Stroud is coming off of that phenomenal game. He had um, the five touchdowns, 470 passing yards. Definitely not a game to look at and say, well, that's going to be an easy win for either of these teams. I think it'll be a difficult win. And uh, Sunday Night Football, the Bengals beat the Bills, but Jamar Chase got injured, has some back soreness. And uh, we've got T. Higgins also has a hamstring injury, according to Adam Schefter. Adam Schefter did tweet about an hour ago that they have now, they're both at practice today. Jamar Chase is in a jersey. T. Higgins is not. Um, So, a little, obviously you want all your best guys out there, right? You you want T. Higgins and Jamar Chase out there if sure. the situation allows it. However, there's this idea I'm seeing in the media that the Bengals can't win with both of them. If both of them aren't out there, if one of them isn't out there, it'll be harder, definitely. But uh, I think this Bengals team has shown that they will find ways to win. Uh, the, last week they used the tight ends more often than they usually do. Um, Joe's starting to get some chemistry with all three. Two of the tight ends had touchdowns, Drew Sample and Irv Smith. Also, I'm excited to see our rookie wide receivers. We drafted Charlie Jones, a standout out of Purdue. He hasn't been available for a lot of games due to an injury, but in the one game that he played, he had one reception for six yards, and then against the Ravens, he had a punt return touchdown. So uh, that's some big yardage right there. The one guy, I'm still excited to see Charlie Jones because I do think he can be more. He was kind of drafted to be more of Tyler Boyd's replacement, I think. Yoshi is the big bodied guy, Andre Yosivas, who is a sixth round uh, pick, I believe. And he has just been great. He's been a great red zone threat. You look at his stats and his yardage isn't insane. The most he has is nine in both the Cardinals and the Bills game. But he already has two touchdowns, and that's pretty good considering he's very rarely used. So if Jamar Chase or T. Higgins is out, I think Joe Burrow will find a way to win this game, whether it be on the run game. Um, The Bengals' defense is going to come in with a point to prove, I think. With C.J. Stroud coming off of that huge game, uh, you've got... Cam Taylor Britt's going to want another interception. Logan Wilson's going to want another interception. I I know I know that they know where they're ranked on the all the do, list. But like, do do you actually think that they do? Because I feel like some players don't really keep track of stats like that. I mean, like defensive players might not be really keeping track of that unless they're like insane i I don't know i I don't i I don't know because i I feel like there's some players i don't really keep track like okay tyree kill might be keeping track of where he's at so he can get to 2000 yards but like there might be some players that aren't really like counting how many because i I just like this is not relating to what you're talking about entirely because this is a hockey reference but like Sidney crosby just did an interview the other day and somebody was like how many points do you have this season he was like i don't know off the top of my head and um and then I think he ended up guessing correctly. But then they asked him how many points he had all time. And he was like, uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> so like so i mean like i, I don't feel i feel like it's just I feel like the players just kind of focus on one game at a time, but I mean, maybe, but if they're, if they've been ball hungry on your side, then there is that chance that they they're looking for that next interception because they've been ball hungry. So I think they know how many interceptions they've got and they know how many interceptions the leader has, which is currently Geno stone with the Ravens. And they know maybe, I mean, I don't know. They're they're not going to do something stupid to chase that. Like, Logan Wilson's not going to leave his zone just to fly over to where the ball is to try and steal an interception from someone else. That's not how that defense operates. That's not the type of guy he seems to be. I don't know him, but he doesn't strike me as that. I'm just saying, I think, in fact, Trey Hendrickson, he's currently chasing his own franchise sack record and is also in uh, top five sacks. There was, against the Bills, he had a sack. I don't know if it went down as a sack or not, but it was, like, right at the line of scrimmage, and he was, like, by the ref, and you could see the ref laughing, and you could almost, I wish he was mic'd up, but you could see on his lips, it sounded like he said, come on, just give it to me. Like, he knew he knew he needed that sack to help him get. I think some of these guys keep track of it. Now, all time, I don't think... That's a bit harder to keep track of, especially in a sport like hockey with Sidney well, Crosby. I mean, it's just goals and assists. Yeah, but all time, like Sidney Maybe. Crosby's been playing a while. I mean, I get your good good point. So he just had his like fifteen hundredth point, I think, not too long ago. I think that's what he said. So yeah, maybe he knows that. Maybe he knows that's coming up. But I don't think that'd be. Like, if you asked Jamar Chase, how many receptions have you had in your career? That might be harder. But if you asked him how many receptions he had last week, probably yeah, not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know if they're, like, always tracking. I feel like sometimes they are, but, like, I feel like, you know, I don't know. I feel like they're just kind of, like, focusing on the game and seeing. But maybe. I mean, it's a possibility. I'm not trying to, like, burst the bubble or anything, but I'm just trying to bring up that conversation because it's, like, do they really know or or are they just, like, playing and just – really intense because like i don't know does like tj watt like kind of like look at his stats or is he just out there playing ball and just like trying to destroy everybody we, that's on the field No, tj watt looks at his stats yeah, he got really. fined for looking on his phone last year oh. at his stats oh, that's during funny. the game he okay. last year when he got the sack record or was it the year before whatever year that was i was he, at, it was i think it was like two years ago two years ago yeah two years yeah. ago he got fined for looking on his phone to see if they gave it to him Oh yeah, because he had tied. <laughs> yeah, he had the tie. Yeah, he yeah. tied the sack record, which is insane. But yeah. um, also another another question for you. Um, you remember? I don't know if you remember this conversation we had last year. Uh, this was before we kind of moved to YouTube, and we were kind of just doing this as like a Spotify, Apple Music, and just podcast. But um, we had a conversation about tight ends and the importance that they have. Do you believe that the tight end is now much more important for your team? in going to the Super Bowl, because if now you're getting targets with Drew Sample and Irv Smith, and they both had touchdowns, if you take them out of the game, would you have still won? Um, so I the tight end is one of my favorite positions. Let me just say that. The reason I'm a Bengals fan is because of Tyler Eifert, who was a tight end. I love the tight end position. Gronk is one of my favorite players. He's the greatest tight end of all time. Sorry, Travis Kelsey. He's just a better blocker. But I don't, I think it depends on your team and your scheme. The okay. Bengals do not value the tight end position because the way the team is lined up, they don't need to. When you have Jamar Chase, when you have T. Higgins, when you have Tyler Boyd, you don't need to go out and spend a ton of money on a tight end. Yeah. I would love it if we could bring in a top tier tight end, but they can't. They can't afford to. Um, and they don't need to because they don't necessarily need that receiving threat. Did it help them win on Sunday? Yes, but probably because the Bengals never used their tight ends up until that game. And they had Tanner Hudson out there, who was a practice squad player, tight end. Bills don't really know much about him and how the Bengals are going to use him. Same with Irv Smith. Irv Smith last week had a fumble. Or not last week, the week before had a fumble. And there was this whole narrative going around like, 
Joe Burrow doesn't trust Irv Smith. So maybe they don't game plan for Irv Smith. Okay, Drew Sample. We know he's a blocking tight end. That's primarily what he does. He gets a few receptions. We're not going to look at him to be a receiving threat. We're going to focus on T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, and Tyler Boyd. Now, go to the Chiefs. They have some decent receivers, but Patrick Mahomes also has 24 passes that have been dropped this season by his receivers. In that case, you need Travis Kelsey. You need to have that top-tier tight end because without that tight end, you have no passing game. Nope. So it really, it really depends on what you have. If we get into a situation where, T, let's say T. Higgins moves on and Yoshi is his replacement, then maybe you go out and you get a higher tier tight end because Irv is on a one-year contract, I believe. So I I think the Bengals can win without the tight end position. I think they can win a Super Bowl. Or not without the tight end position, but without a top-tier tight end. But it would obviously be more helpful, if that makes sense. Like, obviously, the more great pass catchers you have, the easier it is to win but I don't think they need him because they have Joe Burrow. They have Jamar Chase. They have all these other guys. Yeah, I was just wondering if you if you believed also it like benefited you to have like these somewhat better tight ends and that Joe Burrow is like actually looking at them a little bit more now just because like before he wasn't and like, you know, maybe you guys like weren't winning games because of it or maybe it had nothing to do with that altogether because obviously Burrow was hurt. I just didn't know if like your opinions had changed or what you felt about the tight end position and if you felt a little bit more confident now that you have some tight ends that can actually like get you some points and stuff, like whether it's seven, you know, like getting you that seven points or six, I guess, technically, because they don't do the extra point, but get that six points for you or whatever. So I just, I was just curious to see where you stood for that now. So, so like last season, when we talked about this, Hayden Hurst was the Bengals tight end. Yes. And I remember season before it was CJ Uzama. Mm -hmm. Irv Smith has probably been the worst performing out of those three. Drew Sample's been on the team since 2019. I believe Mm -hmm. he was drafted by the Bengals in 2018, 2019. I think it was 2019, but I, I think there was some doubts about Irv Smith because he had a lot of dropped passes on third downs Mm -hmm. and it just seemed like the effort wasn't there. You very rarely heard his name called in a positive light. Um, so I think that was the issue that Joe might've had with him. And then this game I think was a confidence booster for the tight ends, hopefully. And hopefully Joe is able to use them more often now, but that's yeah. my that, that, thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering about it. Just just wanted to hear what you had to say about that in regards to it. I want Travis Kelsey to be on the Bengals if we can have him. That that'll probably upset some Bengals fans. Yeah, yeah you're in your dreams, Josh, in your dreams. <laughs> in I don't my think dreams. Tra- I don't think Travis Kelsey ever is going to be leaving those <laughs> you know, those Kansas City Chiefs. I think he'll probably die they, on that grave. Said about Randy Moss and the Vikings. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess I guess the same thing could have been said about Gronk and Brady too. Never leaving New England, and they both ended up retiring Buccaneers. So I guess I guess possible. Well, tonight we have Thursday night football on Amazon Prime. We have, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Tyson Badgens led Chicago Bears, the D two legend. Facing the number one overall draft pick, Bryce Young in the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Looks like Justin Fields is definitely out. Khalil Herbert is also likely out. Cole Komet uh, was full practice, so it looks like he'll play. Equimania St. Brown is questionable for this game. Tremaine Edmonds is also out. Looking at the Carolina Panthers, Brian Burns out. DJ Chark, doubtful. CJ Henderson, out. Uh, LaVisca Chenault Jr., out. Steven Sullivan, out. Von Bell is questionable. Uh, Tommy Tremble doesn't have a designation, so it looks like he'll play. Those are some of the big names that were on the injury list. Um, so if you're a Carolina Panthers fan, get ready to meet some of your backups. 
Um, also very interesting because I thought that Khalil Herbert was going to be able to be cleared for this game. So as if you're still listening and you began at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned that maybe get Khalil Herbert an anytime touchdown for a bet as I was <laughs> kind of promoting for Josh. But if he's not going to play, that probably wouldn't be a good bet to place because you're just pretty much just donating to um, DraftKings. So Odds are not very good. No, but <laughs> he should be back, I would assume, very soon because he just got activated off of IR, I'm assuming, like, this week. So, I mean, because he's been, you know, talked about in the news over this past week. So I'm, I'm assuming that he'll be back probably next week. But I thought he was going to be back tonight. So Not tonight. Not kind per, of a bummer. Not per the Bears website. But what are you looking for tonight in tonight's game? Are you going to watch this showdown? Uh, probably not. Um, I'm really, I'm really not that interested to watch it live. Um, I'm not going to lie because first of all, Bryce Young is not impressing me like CJ Stroud is like, I would much rather turn on a Houston Texans Thursday night football game and see Stroud play than Bryce Young and his Carolina Panthers. Now, granted, I get it that like, oh yeah, Carolina's rebuilding and they don't really have a lot of weapons. Well, the same argument can be made about Houston too. Like Houston doesn't have those stud of wide receivers and somehow Stroud is throwing 450 yards and five touchdowns in a game. So CJ Stroud's doing something right. And Bryce Young hasn't gotten it all figured out yet. Maybe it's the coaching, maybe it's coordinators. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's kind of boring watching Panthers games. I'm not going to lie. So personally, I don't really have any interest in watching. I will be watching the highlights as I typically do on games that I find very boring or just not eventful because usually those games end up having very minimal highlights and I don't have to watch too much. So I'll watch an eight minute quick video and um, I hope it ends up being a shootout and I really regret missing it because all of the things that I've just said just go out the window and everybody can be like in the comments, ha ha, you're trash, you were wrong and I can feel bad about myself. But for now, do I'm, just, I'm gonna feel bad n for nothing because I don't really think that um I don't think it's gonna be that good of a game because once again Tyson Badgen's going in I think he he could be good but I, I really I, it's not like he's going up against any like major competition here he heck I I freaking Chicago Bears defense in this week in in fantasy just because I don't think Carolina is gonna do anything so I mean. It's a, it's a it's a stressful league, okay? That that league, I, and there's not a lot of defenses <laughs> in anyway. So it's not like I have a lot of choices. So I have like five teams I can pick from, and Chicago just happened to be the best. But I will not be watching now. So okay, well, Tyson Badgett is someone who I want to pay attention to because last week in the first half he looked pretty good. He had some decent stats. He and I posted on Instagram, "Hey, Tyson Badgett's playing really well." I immediately jinxed him, apparently, because he started playing horribly after that. So, Tyson, I will not be posting anything on Instagram about you until the game is over. Don't want to jinx you. He ended up last week against a very good Saints defense. They have since convinced me they're as good as what people were saying they were. He had 220 yards for two touchdowns and three interceptions. So, not a great game, um, obviously. But this... Panthers defense is much, much worse. And yeah. uh, I think he has shown signs of potential, maybe not starting potential, but NFL backup potential. Um, he's been very good, I think, with what he's been asked to do. And Justin Fields struggled with this offense. And so the fact that they haven't completely imploded with him in at backup, I think, is something that people should acknowledge, especially since he was a D2 college quarterback, undrafted. No one really paid attention to him. Yeah, no, um, I agree. I I think uh, we could see a good game from him tonight, and that's what I'd be – that's what I'm going to be looking for, really, on Thursday Night Football tonight because there isn't really much else other than a potential Bryce Young breakout game. I mean, we're still kind of waiting for because the problem is, is like none of these teams are anywhere even close to like playoffs right now. So it's not like these are for like some sort of playoff implications or anything like that. I mean, it's early on in the season, so everything can change. And when it comes to this, like, for example, like when you guys were playing the Bills this past week, if you guys won and you guys did, you guys would be in a playoff spot. So, I mean, like, it kind of gives you that kind of sense where it's like, oh, you know, if they, they, if they win this game, they'll only be one game out or a half a game out. 
these two teams are so far out that it doesn't even really matter if they win or lose tonight. I feel like because I mean I don't I don't know the records off by hand, but I know Chicago only has what one two wins, two wins. Yeah, so I'm pulling this up here to see. Chicago currently is in the uh, second spot for the draft. Yeah, so they and are the in... third. Yeah, so not good. And then would first be well, Carolina doesn't have their. So actually, this game, this pick has not. This game has nothing because the Bears have the Carolina Panthers pick. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> so really, if the Bears beat. Carolina, they're just helping themselves. Yeah, so really, this is just a game for the Bears to kind of screw over Carolina in the draft, right? You know, because, uh, or not even screwing them over, just kind of giving themselves a better spot. In the, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you know, so yeah, it's, just, it's, it's just it's just a double loss for Carolina all the way around. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what the what, what do you what do you what do you what do you want to call this game? It's like if Carolina wins, you know, like. I don't even so odd, so odd because isn't it just going to move like certain picks around? It's just going to be so stupid. If Carolina wins, then the bears would drop a pick, but they'd switch with the pick that they already have because they're second and third. So it's meaningless. It's literally meaningless. It's pretty much a meaningless game. Yeah. This game means absolutely (laughs) nothing for not, for no reason. So like, like you said, we're looking at maybe seeing a, a badge in, win you know a d2 <laughs> quarterback win huge big big dubs or a bryce young breakout game is ma- yep. more or less what we're looking at right now that's why i said not not really worth <laughs> my time um not that's, worth his time no nah, i mean they really need to put some some nice prime time games on and they have just i've just not have you, seen have you looked been, at the week 10 prime time schedule no but what's the what's that prime time schedule looking like Thursday Night Football, we have, as we've been talking about, the Bears versus the Panthers that Chess will not be watching. Sunday Night Football, we have a game that could have been flexed out, but the NFL decided, nope, people want to watch that. They were wrong. There were so many complaints. It is the Jets at the Raiders. We'll see Zach Wilson possibly implode two weeks in a row on primetime national TV against Aiden (laughs) O'Connell. Raiders my chest hurts my chest hurts from just an, the pain in my they're, heart they're from coming having off to of watch a, that game they're coming off of a win the Raiders are four and five the Jets are four and four and then Monday night football is the Denver Broncos who did beat the Kansas uh, City Chiefs this, somehow. okay this is already not going okay keep going versus the Buffalo Bills who are coming off of a prime time loss to the Cincinnati Bengals <laughs> Uh, you know what? I'm rooting for freaking. Wouldn't it just be really funny if Buffalo lost again to Denver? <laughs> yeah, Broncos. Denver. Denver is the anti Dolphins. They only beat teams with winning records. Yeah, but they can't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that would be really funny, but <laughs> for the rest of the season, if Russ just started cooking. But um, those, are, those are your prime time games this uh, week, which we'll discuss who we think is going to win here in a little bit. But that's what you got coming up. Yeah, I'm not just really the, looking forward to. I mean, Monday night might be okay. Sunday night, I feel like it's just going to be another snooze fest. I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, my my chest hurts from having to have the, the freaking Vegas Raiders taking on the Jets. I don't know why they have the Raiders on so many primetime games. Because they're good. They're not. <laughs> they're so they're good, not. Jimmy. Jimmy Garoppolo with Josh McDaniels and Devonte Adams, and now they've fired everyone. You, speaking of D- Josh McDaniels, I just don't even care. The best thing about him being fired is I don't have to remember how to spell Mike McDaniels' name and Josh McDaniels' name. Yeah, uh, that was that confusing. Is true. But he went and called in his kids on Halloween and broke the news to them on Halloween that he had been fired. Which, granted, he's still making like ten million dollars a year. So Mm -hmm. I don't know how you could be that upset about it, but he was like, why would you ruin your kids Halloween like that? Josh, how giving us all a bad name. How old is their kids? I don't know. I just saw a report that Josh McDaniels called his kids in from trick or treating. 
and broke the news to them on Halloween that he had been fired. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's not as bad as like Christmas, like <laughs> breaking the news on like Christmas or something like that. Who fires like, a guy on Christmas, though? If if they fired him on Christmas, though, that's, like, on the Raiders. That's even worse. No, but I mean, like, firing... Because, like, when did Mick, when did he get fired, though? On Halloween. Like, did he get fired on Halloween? Yeah, he got... I think he got fired Halloween night. Oh. Then maybe, like late, I guess. Late, late, late Halloween night. <sighs> Whatever. So, but, I, I gotta ask, though. This is something... I, I don't know if you would even know. So, like... If a coach is getting fired, do they get like a phone call or do they get like an email or a letter in the mail? Like what, what do they get? Like just, be, or do they find out on social media that they're gone? Uh, I think it depends. I've heard stories of people finding out on social media, but I think Josh McDaniels knew he was going to get fired because they had like a players only meeting. And then they had a meeting where they, uh, let the players like just kind of get everything off their chest about him. And he just didn't take it well, couldn't handle the criticism. And I'm sure Devonte Adams was at the front of all that. But then Antoine Pierce, Antonio Pierce, the linebackers coach at the time, now the head interim head coach, he, he did something that Davis was like, that's going to be my guy now. I forget what it was that he did, but he did something in that meeting where he just laid into Mike McDaniels and or not Mike McDaniels, Josh McDaniels. See, it's confusing and uh, just hammered into him and uh, supported the players. And I guess Davis really liked that, but I'd imagine he got called in to his office or something, but mm -hmm. I could also see them just being like, Hey, you're fired, dude. And they call him on the phone, and they're just like, hey, listen, we're terminating you. Please come to the office and clear out your things. And part of it could be how quickly an insider gets a hold of it. Like if someone, the janitor, or I don't know how all this works, but if the janitor like overhears like phone call where they're talking about Josh McDaniels getting fired and they're going to fire him, calls up Adam Schefter, and Adam Schefter reports that. And yeah. Maybe that's part of it. He finds out on social media. I don't think that's what happened in this case, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess we'll never know. I just always was curious how that would go about. I don't think uh, it goes over very well in any case. Yeah. Let's go over our picks for the week, though, in these fantastic games that we have scheduled, starting with the Panthers and the Chicago Bears. Who do you got this week? I'm going to go with the Bears. Um, I don't think either of these teams are that good. Obviously, the the uh, j the draft kind of shows that. But um, yeah, I think that I, I think that um, I think it's going to be Chicago, just because I think Carolina doesn't really have that good of a defense. Not that Chicago has a better defense, but I think they might have just slightly better defense. I do think they just have a slightly better team overall than Carolina? And if Carolina wins, I'll be surprised, but also not entirely shocked because it's Tyson Badgen. Might be a little inconsistent, but I'm going to go with Chicago here. I think it's going to be a close game. I feel like it's going to be won by like a field goal or like two points or something ridiculous, and it's going to be boring. It's going to be like a 16 13 final. It's going to be a two to zero game, went off of a safety. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears. I think Tyson Badgett has shown some potential, like I said. I don't think the Panthers will be able to create the turnovers that the New Orleans Saints defense was able to, especially since they've got some injuries. I haven't seen anything from Bryce Young that wows me, which, I mean, I really like their tight end Hayden Hurst because he was a Bengal, but uh, yeah, I'm going Bears as well. Next up in Frankfurt, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. We have the Colts against the New England Patriots. Um, I'm gonna go with the Colts. I I, the Colts I are just the the better team. Um, I feel like they've just looked a lot better. I mean, the Patriots just for me just have like nothing 
at all. Obviously, they are, I think, the wor- one of the worst teams in the NFL. I mean, they're two and seven. They got to be. The, I think they're the worst team in the AFC at least. So I know they're really not that good, and I, I really think they're just just struggling on all fronts. So, but Indianapolis, they have a little bit of promise there. They have a little bit of a spark. You know, I can only imagine what the team would look like with Anthony Richardson in there right now. You know, he really made me eat my eat my words at the beginning of the season, but unfortunately, we didn't see much of him because he like hurt himself for the rest of the year. But um, but I mean, I think Minshew's doing a decent job. They just got to finish those games instead of like having really big leads and then blowing them. I think they just need to finish them off. So I'm gonna go with the Colts. I think they're gonna finish it off. I don't think the Patriots are gonna pull this one out. Yeah, I'm also going to go with the Indianapolis Colts here. Gardner Minshew's been great. They're going to be down Josh Downs, but it looks like Sammy Watkins was there for practice. I don't know if they signed him. Didn't hear anything after that. Uh, They also have Alec Pierce, who's on his second year. Maybe we'll get some good touches. And then Michael Pittman Jr. has been fantastic this year. Uh, Jonathan Taylor looks like he's back to his full uh, steam. So him and Zach Moss are going to be running the ball a lot, I'm sure. And this should be an easy game for the Colts to control possession, limit some turnovers, keep uh, the Patriots from even having the ball. Not that they could do anything with it if they did. But you know what? Sorry, Mac Jones. Uh, I'm, I'm not. You're kind of a dirty player, if I'm being honest. Browns at Ravens. <laughs> Browns at Ravens. Um, I hope they both lose. I mean, I wish that they both could lose as well, <laughs> but I guess, I guess I'll go with the Ravens. Um, just because the Ravens are home. Um, and I think that although the Browns are decent, I don't know if the Ravens will be able to get shut down by Cleveland. Um, I think Baltimore is just been historically you know, good against Cleveland over the years. And I don't really see them slowing down at home, you know, this late in because they're already seven and two. I feel like they'll be what eight and two by the end of this. So I think I, I'm going to go with Baltimore. I'm going to go with Cleveland. I think that the Ravens wide receivers are not good. It's, well, oh no, I agree. But I, but and, for some reason they're finding ways to win games. That's why I'm just, and, I think that that front line that the Browns have is going to shut them down. I think Miles Garrett's going to have a big game. I think he's going to want to show that he can take on Lamar Jackson. Probably, yeah. I think, I think this is going to be a big Miles Garrett game, like the Colts game was. So we'll see what happens. I'm taking Cleveland, though. Um, okay. Sean Watson's back as well, which helps the offense a little bit. Not a whole, not a whole lot, but... Definitely helps limit the turnovers a bit from what PJ Walker had. Packers at Steelers. I wonder who you're going to pick. Um, I think we're going to go with the Packers with this one. Um, no, I'm going with the Steelers as always. Um, never rooting against my boys, regardless of how up and down they are. Um, I do think there's a chance, obviously, that we could win. Um, I think there's always a chance that we can win, I swear, any of these games at this point. Um, but I, I don't think Green Bay is as big of a threat as like Tennessee was or Jacksonville or any of these other teams. Um, so I definitely think this is a much more winnable game than some of these other games that we played over this season. So, and we got the block numbers coming back, so maybe that'll bring us some good luck. But I'm gonna root for the Steelers. We'll just say, yeah, uh, screw Steelers. you guys for that, by the way. Why? Why? The, we didn't do anything. Did, did you see the post? W- what You're post? Like- the Steelers the post announcement. Yeah, they were like, "Stay tuned for a big announcement at 3 p.m." And I was like, "Oh shoot, okay, I cool." Knew, I knew it was going to be the jerseys. I knew. I they, thought they were going to bring back the bumblebees, though. That's I what I thought. Like, I thought they were going to do like an alternate jersey or something like that, something cool. And then they're like the block numbers, which most of the league already wears. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm not in charge of the Steelers' social media, dude. What do you want I'm me to do? I'm tempted to choose the Packers just because of that. Okay, then do it. No, I'm picking the Steelers because the Packers suck and their defense is insanely bad. But uh, I, I want the Packers to win, but I can't objectively choose that. So Steelers. Hey, hey you might jump. if Even if we win and, and the Browns lose, you might be able to jump to third, maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. Maybe not because of your AFC record. I don't know. I want the to Ravens look. to lose, though, because I want the 
I want the AFC North. I feel like the Browns are easier to. I don't know. I don't know what I want. I, well, I want. We, it's too soon to tell. It's way too soon want, to tell what's going to. I happening. want the Bengals at the top of the North. That is what I want. Next game: Forty ers at Jaguars. You Debo know, Samuel is supposed to be back. By the way, he is supposed to be back. Her reports. That does change a lot because initially I was going to say Jacksonville, but. Honestly, I think I'm going to stick with Jacksonville. I don't okay. think San. The reason is is just because I, I think San Francisco has been on a spell of just like they haven't had it figured out like they had at the initial beginning of the season, and I feel like they're having like a second, like a mid season meltdown right now, and I think they really need to figure that out. And I don't think they're going to figure it out against Jacksonville. I don't know when they're going to figure it out, but I don't think it's going to be this game. I, I, if they win, I don't see it being by a larger margin. Just because Debo's back, I think they'll probably win like maybe by like a 28-24 final at the most. It could be like a 21-17. Like I, I think it's going to be like a four-point margin win. Um, I don't really see it being uh, in San Francisco's favor. Um, I'm going to go with Jacksonville just because of that, just because Jacksonville has been looking a little bit more complete than San Francisco has over these last couple of weeks. I'm not saying Jacksonville is a complete team, but they have looked more complete than San Francisco was when San Francisco was in week one, two and three. I was like, man, this team is freaking goaded. Like what the heck? And like, nobody's going to be able to beat this team. Then all of a sudden Cleveland beat them and they became the stinkers. So I, I don't even know what's happened. So Jacksonville, you know, Jacksonville. I'm going to go with the 49ers. Debo's coming back. Kyle Shanahan has uh, a full Arsenal there. Let me check something real quick as well uh, because this will be a huge thing. Let me see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Trent Williams is questionable. Mm. So Ooh. that would be a big one as well if he's able to come back. Let's assume he doesn't play. I'm still going 49ers. I think I think Kyle Shanahan's going to have fun with Debo back. Brock Purdy uh, is going to figure something out. He, he's been in a bit of a slump. Can't be having that. Christian McCaffrey is just going to continue doing Christian McCaffrey things. So I'm going 49ers. Yeah. Next nice. game, Saints at Vikings. Josh Dobbs is the quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. The pastronaut. Oh, I'm going Vikings. Uh, they have been hot for no reason, <laughs> and I am going Vikings all the way. I don't care how good the Saints defense is. Dobbs is a decent quarterback. He looked good in Arizona. He made Arizona look good for some of these games, and Arizona was not good. And then as soon as Arizona leaves, they get shut. Or as soon as um Dobbs leaves Arizona, they get shut out by freaking Cleveland. So um, well, Clayton Tune was also terrible. Yeah, but nonetheless, like. <laughs> Shows a lot about our Joshua Dobbs society. So, and I think Dobbs being in Minnesota is going to be awesome. He had a great story to begin his uh, uh, Minnesota career. And um, I really do think they're going to pull out the win against the Saints as well. Um, like Which, I said, Saints defense is good, but Minnesota. I don't think, I don't think we gave head coach Kevin O'Connell enough credit there either, though. Fair enough. Yes. To <laughs> say the play name and then also walk through the entire play for the quarterback for what the play is actually going to be all in a 15 second span. Cause a lot of people don't realize this. He gets like 15 seconds before that mic shuts off in the helmet and then they can't hear each other. Mm -hmm. So he's only, he's got limited time there before it's shut off to explain all that. You know what? Maybe Kevin O'Connell's coach of the year. I don't know. I don't have a clear coach of the year yet. Maybe it's Kevin O'Connell. Maybe, maybe. I mean, it depends on how they finish this season. I feel like, I feel like if they finish strong and they make a playoff spot and they do really well and stuff like that, very well possibly could be. But I feel like there's a lot of other candidates right now for that okay. position right now. So, Texans at Bengals. We already talked about this a little bit. Obviously, I'm taking the ban the Bengals. Who are you taking? Oh, this one's tough because the Bengals are coming off of a couple of good wins, though. That's the problem is like the Bengals are coming off of a lot of good wins and Stroud's coming off of like the monster game ever. Do I think that he'll replicate it? I don't know. I don't think he will because it's very hard to replicate that much of like a 400 yard game. But if he like replicates that, I will be shocked. 
I mean, if he, against he, the, I don't know if it'll be against the Bengals, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did it again. No, if he, I'm saying if he replicated against the Bengals defense, I'd be shocked because even at the Bengals defense is worst. They, I don't think they allow that. I guess, I guess I'll go with the Bengals just because I think you guys have been on like a nice little, uh, little streak here. And I think that maybe you guys are starting to slowly figure it out. Um, obviously Houston's team is definitely not as advanced offensively and defensively as the Bengals are. Now, granted, I don't think the the Bengals are the most complete NFL team, as we have talked about last week. <laughs> so, and I don't think they're the best team of all time either. Um, but I do think that there's a good spot of them winning this game because I don't know unless unless Stroud picks apart your defense. That's that's the only thing because. He picked apart the Steelers defense like it was just freaking picking pine needles off of a tree, man. Like that was insane. So it's very possible that they could he could just be like quick throws. The defense doesn't know what hits them or long like just, just whatever your play, whatever you're doing for your play style is just not it might not work. But or maybe it will work. It's too soon to be tell. But I'll go with Cincinnati. Go with Cincinnati. I just Lou Lou Anaruma, the defensive coordinator for the Bengals. I think, and this is just an objective stance. This isn't me because he's a Bengals coach. I think he's the best defensive coordinator in the NFL. Um, he's been in head coaching talks for the last two to three years, and he is a mad scientist when it comes to coaching defenses. So Bengals fans are constantly in a state of fear that we're going to lose him to a head coaching gig, but also would be extremely happy for him if he does get a head coaching gig. I don't think Lou Anaruma is going to allow CJ Stroud to pick apart the defense because I think he'll come back with a counter that they aren't prepared for. Which I and I hope that they do. So that as long as they can, as long as he can't pick apart that defense, or if it, it looks like he's starting to, and Lou actually like sends out a counter, I, I do think the Bengals have a good shot at winning this. Titans at Buccaneers. Will Levis is officially the starting quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill will be riding the bench. I will be rooting for the Titans for this game. I will be also riding as my pick for this week. I think Will Levis has a lot of promise, and although he didn't really show a whole lot of promising numbers against the Steelers, once again, versing the Steelers in Pittsburgh on primetime football in one of your first full games this entire season, you know, he's not, you're not going to have the best, the best go around at it. But I think with this game, um, they're, they're not home for this game, right? You said it was Titans are at Tampa, right? It is. Let me double check here before. Yes, they're at Tampa. I, okay. So I, I do think that even though they're in Tampa, I, I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal. I think Will Levis will show a lot more in this game. Um, he had two one. He had over 200 yards in the loss against the Steelers, though he had one interception. But granted, there really wasn't a whole lot of scoring going on in for for uh, Tennessee either. I mean, there really wasn't a lot of scoring going on in general. But um, I think Will Levis will will produce the similar numbers that he had his first game out. And uh, keep an eye out on D Hop again because D Hop all of a sudden is just it's racking up some points. So if he's on your fantasy bench right now. You better be starting him right now because he he might be booming. He might start booming these next couple of weeks. So, but I'm going Tennessee. Will Levis does like D Hop. Um, I was looking for my notes on Will Levis, but I couldn't find them. I think he needs to work on game situation knowledge. They showed like little to no hurry in the Steelers game, and they could yes. have won that. He also needs to work on decision-making a little bit. I do like that he wasn't scared to throw the close passes, but at the same time, there were some passes that he made where it was like, dude, don't, don't do that. Don't do that in this situation. Yeah. So um, he has a cannon for an arm, though, and he could easily be the best quarterback. It's going to be between him and C.J. Stroud, I think, for best quarterback out of this draft. So um, obviously, C.J. Stroud has that lead right now, but Will Levis... Go for it, man. You've got and then, you've got and a then who knows though? Maybe AR down the road. Yeah, maybe maybe AR. But just what we've seen so far. Good quarterback class, man. Next year though, imagine all the quarterbacks <laughs> next year end up being busts. Like all the good quarterbacks that everyone was like, oh, they're not bad. 
end up being this year and the next year like Caleb Williams is like a terrible quarterback in the NFL I don't think he will be but it'd just be really crazy because everybody's like oh like in in the sleeper pick or the sleeper thing that I'm doing there's a team name named win winless for Williams and uh, they're just pretty much tanking for uh, Caleb Williams and I'm like imagine if Caleb Williams is just not good like I'm like I, I like that would be just devastating but i think he a whole as he's projected right now to go what new england probably uh a lot of people have him going to the cardinals which i don't think is going to happen because i don't think the cardinals are actually tanking for williams like a lot of people think they are no but um we'll next see. game oh i'm taking the titans by the way if i didn't make that clear you didn't <laughs> you, you you didn't make it clear okay titans Lions at Chargers. Lions. I'm going Lions too. Justin Herbert did not have a good game on Monday Night Football. Granted, the New York Jets defense is phenomenal, but people were hyping him up as an elite quarterback. He has not shown that to me this year. Jared Goff has been a much better quarterback. They also now have Donovan Peoples-Jones, who I love that man. That that video is going insane. I never expected that video to go insane because we recorded it at like 11 at night and we were both really tired. Yeah, but, I mean, like, I, I did like Donovan Peoples-Jones, though. I mean, I do, was, I did, he, I did too. Everything I, mean, I said in that video. Yeah, I mean, it's, right. it, it's so I, I, I'm excited to see what he does this week if if they have him. On, I'm sure they'll have him in rotation. So, mm-hmm. um, go Lions. Uh, go, go Lions this week, baby. Let's go. Falcons at Cardinals, the bird game. Um, well, Kyler Murray is back. So we do got to put that into into it, but I don't think. But James Con is James Connor back yet? I don't think so. Because I thought he was going to get activated off of IR as well. So interesting. that's interesting if he does. Uh, James, he's designated a return, but I don't know if he's going to play. Okay, so that will be interesting because if he does play, they might have a chance. If they don't. I'm going to go with Atlanta. And the reason is, is just because I feel like Arizona's run game has just done absolutely nothing. And I feel like with the team that is not doing real good offensively, even if you throw Kyler Murray back in there, he's not going to be able to do at, at like anything unless he has a little bit of a run game. So I'm going to go with Atlanta. I think Atlanta looks a little bit better than um, Arizona. And um, I mean, I don't really see Arizona doing a whole lot this season, but. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe things will change now that, uh, homie Kyler's back, but we'll see. I'm going with Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. I think he, he does something, brings it back and, uh, makes Joe Camo happy. And he, I, I, I think this is the game. This, I just, I just got a feeling Zach Ertz has been waiting. Marquise Brown's been waiting for him. We got, we got, uh, I mean, the Falcons lost last week to Josh Dobbs and the Vikings. So, yeah, that's. I'm going Cardinals. Okay. (laughs) You're going to love this matchup. The Giants versus the Cowboys. Tommy DeVito, who I believe is getting the start, which would set an NFL record for most quarterbacks starting in one season. They also signed Jacob Eason, who was originally drafted by the Colts in 2020 as a late round pick. I believe is the backup. So I'm going Cowboys. Yeah, I don't really see <laughs> any reason why you should pick the Giants. So um Cowboys. Yeah. No 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 further detail needed for that. <laughs> Commanders, Seahawks. Um I guess I'll go with um I'll go with the Commanders. Okay. I'm going to go, go with, with the Seahawks. Commanders. All right. Yeah. I, I think, I, I I think Sam Howell's going to have a nice game. I think that the uh, Washington defense is awful, and they just traded away two of their best players, so they're oh, and, even more and, yes, awful. And, and I, I, do, I do agree, but I think Sam Howell will have a heyday against the Seahawks. Sam Howell's going to need to put up, like, 50 points yeah, somehow. Yeah, it'll be really fun. <laughs> Sunday Night Football! Ah! Name you've all been waiting for. Oh man, I wish Stan the Jet fan was here for this. But he is not, so he can't defend his team. 
I don't think it was Zach Wilson's fault what happened on Monday Night Football, by the way. I just think that that O-line was abysmal. They had too many uh, offensive line penalties. Alan Lazard had a couple pre-snap penalties. Just Garrett Wilson had a fumble. It was just a team loss. Anyone blaming Zach Wilson solely did not watch the game. That being said, I don't think they fix it. Um, I'm going Raiders. Really? Wow. I think the, I think the players want to win for this interim head coach. He seems to be a players coach. Uh, you know what? That's a good point. I'm going to go Raiders too. That I forgot about that because they. I think the interim head coach thing. I wouldn't be surprised if they won. So They're coming off a win. I think a lot of these players have a point to prove that it wasn't them. I'm going Raiders. Yeah. Uh, Monday Night Football is the Broncos being led by Russ the Cook Wilson against the Buffalo Bills being led by Josh the Interception Machine Allen. I didn't really have another nickname for him. He just what? What is is that? The Bills? Broncos country. Oh, Broncos country. Well, let's ride, baby. Oh, you're going with yeah. the Broncos. Okay, I am. I think I think it's going to be really funny when the Broncos beat Buffalo Bills <laughs> on Monday Night Football. You have had some random upsets this this year, especially the Cowboys losing to the Cardinals. That's one that I don't think anyone picked, but yeah, I did. I mean, then again, I did pick the Cardinals to beat the Browns, and that wasn't even close. So that was I mean, a terrible pick. That, yeah. yeah, I mean, it happens, but I, I, for some reason, I feel like Denver's going to win. <laughs> I don't know why, but I, I just think it'd be really. I, I think it's Monday night. They're coming off of the Buffalo's coming off of another primetime loss. Granted, Denver did beat Patrick Mahomes during the flu game, but I think that I think that Denver is going to win. I don't think Buffalo is going to be. Uh, I mean, I think it'll be a close game, but I think Denver is going to win, and I think Buffalo is going to choke. I don't think I don't know what's wrong with Buffalo, but they need to figure that out like ASAP. They're so like whole the, defense is injured. That's what's wrong with Buffalo. Yeah, they need to figure that out though. Like it, it just because there's injuries, they need to figure out ways to still win. Figure it out, Buffalo. That's what Chuss says. What I you, am gonna, you going with? Oh, I'm going with Buffalo. Wow. Oh. I think I think they can get her done. All right. I think also I love watching Sean Payton lose. It's one of my favorite pastimes, especially after all the smack talk he made. But uh, those are this week's picks. Took a little bit longer than expected because we got a little distracted at times. But that's the end of the show. Chus, do you have anything else you want to add? No. No, I okay. do not. I think I'm then choosing. It's sh- spiel time. Oh, Morgan Wallen was robbed, by the way. Um, thank you for listening to today's show. If you enjoyed, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We can be found anywhere you listen to podcasts and on YouTube at Nobud Show. Our social media pages are no butts underscore show on Instagram and no butts show on TikTok. My Twitter is Josh underscore butts underscore 2001. And if you would like to reach us, you can email us at bowl news podcast two. That's the number two at gmail.com. Finally, our spread shop will be in the description. So check out the merch. Once again, if you enjoyed today's show, please remember to like comment and subscribe until next time. Go do something nice for someone.